if you can find a good educational resource to start writing python code i have built something cool and interesting help you to actually make cool stuff with python lot of different pieces of information and generating useful work with it and sharing a bunch of nuggets most of you can stop when it actually comes to mastering python if you are a fresher or a professional looking to kick start your python journey this is the exact blueprint that you should follow I've been working with Python for the past 12 years and if I had to learn it all over again this is exactly how I would do it. Hi, I am Aman and let me walk you through it step by step. Coding has changed a lot in the past few years and naturally so has how you should learn it. Now, the absolute first thing that I would do before I start learning any of the python features or syntax is actually a bit of research i'd want to understand what it's good at and what i can actually build with it and then try to set myself some sort of a goal as to why i'm trying to learn python as opposed to any other different programming language this way i will know that python is actually the right choice for me it is worth me spending time learning it and i can be working towards something like an end goal an application or finishing some sort of script i know that my learning is going to have some tangible outcome when you are programming it can be really difficult especially when you are starting out a lot of people switch between languages or don't really know where they are going so it's really important to set the direction correctly make sure that this is the language that you want to learn and then give yourself some kind of a goal to work towards so that you know why you're doing all of this now after i was certain that python is a language that i want to learn the next thing to do is to make sure i get my machine set up for python development and learn the different kind of environments and tools that i actually need to start writing python code this means they get into a tutorial and they get immediately overwhelmed because they don't even have python on their machine or they don't know how to run the code or execute it and they don't even know what a code editor or an ide is so you want to be looking for videos or at least articles or lessons online that will share with you that kind of step 0 where you can set everything up and feel comfortable before you dive into the world of writing code now that i've got my machine set up what i'll be focusing on is mastering the basics i'm going to give you an entire list of topics that you should master and after that i will explain exactly how you should learn these especially when you're just starting out the topics in order would be data types operators variables conditionals so this is like elif statements looping so for loops while loops and looping over different objects then i would focus on lists dictionaries and sets kind of the main data structures in python after that i would look at functions now i know that sounds like a lot of stuff but this is going to cover almost 80% of all the programming concepts that you will really ever need to know if you can understand all of those things even if you are not a master at them it is going to help you quite a little bit in progressing through quickly in your programming journey it's great we have this long list of things to focus on now how do you actually learn those personal recommendation at least when you're right at the beginning is to learn from videos the reason why i like watching video courses at the beginning is because at this point you don't know what you don't know where to look up or find articles on but if you can find a good educational resource like a youtube series online or a good instructor they are going to be filling you in with a lot of different pieces of information and sharing a bunch of nuggets that you wouldn't get if you were trying to learn all of these topics independently or you were trying to figure them out by yourself so what i would do now is actually commit the first day or two to my learning of going through a bunch of youtube videos or different resources i would make sure that the teacher makes sense to me i can understand them their teaching style is meshing well with me and i have confidence that this series will be good then i would read some of the comments or some of the reviews and just try to find a high quality resource that i could follow for the next few hours to really get the basics down there are a ton of different tutorials online tons of amazing instructors obviously we teach a lot of python on this channel i am biased but i think our videos are good again commit a little bit of time up front and find the resource you think at the current time is going to help you learn and then commit to that for the next few hours to master these basics just one thing here if you're following along with video tutorials i highly recommend you replicate everything that the instructor does on your own computer 
when I was learning, what was really effective for me was to have a video on one screen or on one part of my screen and my code editor on the other. I would constantly pause the video, type things out, try them on my own and predict what the instructor would say next. It's really important that you're fully engaged and actually interacting with what is going on than simply watching the 20 minute video where you're not actually doing anything and just listening to someone writing code. You want to be coding alongside them, pausing, taking your time. Meaning a video that is 15 to 20 minutes long might actually take you an hour to fully practice and absorb the complete information. Now at this point I know a lot of you guys are thinking about AI. Hasn't AI changed things? Shouldn't I be using AI to learn? The answer is yes, but I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Something else that AI has impacted is its ability to land a job in 2025. So I've gone through a bunch of videos and kind of gotten theory out of the way. What I would be focusing now is on practicing as much as possible and really nailing all of these basic concepts until they become memorized really well and I can understand them intuitively. Now, you don't need to memorize all of these syntax per se, but you do need to know how these things work and be able to use them. So, how would I do that in 2025? Well, what I would really do is lean heavily into AI here. And I would get AI to generate a ton of practice questions for me. One of the biggest issues when you're trying to practice programming is finding a way to do that in small bits or get a bunch of great practice questions to go through. Now, courses can help you with that and there are some resources online, but I would really suggest that you go to chat GPT and say something like, hey, I'm struggling with certain areas and I want to practice. Can you give me some small practice questions in Python? For small questions like these, it is very likely that any LLM or AI will generate good questions and it can verify the answers for you. Anything more complicated? Probably not. But for really basic stuff, you can almost entirely rely on it to be correct. It can make mistakes, but at least for the basics, it can generate hundreds of different problems for you and you can just do a ton until you feel really comfortable with the basic Python syntax. After I'd gone through a ton of different practice questions, I'm talking about maybe hundreds per day or 10 to 20, depending on how much time do you have. What I would be focusing on is a walkthrough of beginner's projects. It is one thing to get the basics of a language down and it's another to understand how to architect software, even if it's small programs, you know, 50 to 100 lines of code. And how to take all of this theoretical knowledge and all of this syntax and combine them together into something larger. For this, what I would do is go and find YouTube videos that have complete project walkthroughs. I would follow along a tutorial like that, try my best to pause between the videos and attempt certain portions of the code on my own and a few days later go back to the video and try to code larger portions of the project myself before referencing back to it. Or I'd go to another video and do the same thing slowly trying to be less and less reliant on it, using it more as an answer key rather than something telling me step by step on how to do it. Now at this point, ideally I would feel really comfortable with basic programming and even creating small projects and hopefully start to build my confidence a bit. This is where I would go into learning about object oriented programming. I wouldn't try to rush this and learn it too early, but once I go through all of that practice and just do a ton of coding with the basic features, object-oriented programming is the next natural step. So at this point, once I have learned object-oriented programming, I know most of the core features in Python. Now there is some advanced stuff to learn in Python, but at this point I would focus on trying something cool and interesting. Personally, what I would try to do is try to make a game using Python using a module like Pygame or try to do stuff like sending an email or messing with the OS module or maybe doing a quick automation script and put them into practice. I think that's super important. So I'd recommend at this stage to pick something like a game, make that in Python 
and that's kind of the next step before you move forward. Once I have built something cool and interesting like a game in Python, what I would do next is go into web development with Python. Now this is the main area where Python really shines. It is where you can really build some interesting application. Even if you don't want to be a web developer, it is assumed in a lot of roles that you do have at least a basic understanding of these concepts. So this is where I would go next. Same thing, I have a list here, so I'm going to read a few topics you should ideally focus on. Some of them are Python specific, some of them are not. The first thing that I would focus on is learning about HTTP methods and just the basics of how the internet actually works. How you serve a page, how you view a page, how you interact with things using request module. Then I would look at request module and this is a module that you can install in Python that allows you to send various requests to things like APIs and other websites. After that, I would try to build a really simple website using a module like Flask. This is a really simple way that you can get a website up and running within just a few minutes. After that, if I was interested in web development, I would move on and learn about something like Django. Again, I wouldn't spend a lot of time here, but I would want to be familiar with it and must have basic skills in it. Then at last, I would maybe dabble in something like Fast API just to get a sense of these different Python frameworks and how you can use these to build websites and APIs. So that's it. I would learn Python web development and then I would move on to advanced features of Python. Now the features that I would specifically focus on are decorators, generators, context managers, meta classes and dunder methods. Now you don't really need to understand these super well to be good at Python but it is helpful to really increase your comprehension of the language. Especially when you're working with a lot of different frameworks and modules where these features might be built in but you don't directly touch them. So I would learn these features. It shouldn't take you that long to get the hang of them and by this point you'll know a lot about Python language as a whole. You'll have some understanding of the advanced things that happen behind the scenes and that's really where most of you can stop when it actually comes to mastering Python. After that, what's really next is just getting into specific niche and using Python for, well, what it's used for, building various applications. So I have a long list of apps or different areas that you could get into once you've mastered all of these basic topics. Let me go through them. We have machine learning, we have AI, we have interacting with things like LLMs, we have data science, we have backend developer, doing things like DevOps engineering, doing automation, robotics, integrating with Raspberry Pis, and the list goes on and on. Really, at this point, it's about learning specific tools and modules that help you to actually make cool stuff with Python and generating useful work with it. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe for more structured learning videos and I'll see you in the next one.